What's going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays and I'm back on the channel bringing some more Diablo 4 content your way. Now this is going to be the first video that we're going to be doing for the full release of Diablo 4 and this is going to be my leveling guide when it comes to that of the Assassin. Now I've gone through pretty much the rest of the skill tree. I've managed to allocate all of the points similar to like how we did for the beta. It's going to be using a very similar template to that but obviously we have access to more points so therefore I'm able to go fully into some skills to be able to give it a little bit more versatility. Now I am going to go through what I currently have on this skill tree and this is just purely before I get into game to be able to test it all out. There, are, I'm going to make a couple of suggestions, something that I'm actually going to try out, just so you've got, you've got that in the back of your mind. And then once we've got full access to it, once we've managed to get an, a, a rogue all the way up to max level, and I've managed to get some of the gear, I will be then dropping a proper full-on build when it comes to it to be able to showcase it all off. But if you're enjoying this type of content and you want to see more from us when it comes to Diablo 4, then make sure to drop that like and subscribe so you know where to be able to find us and to be able to come back and get notified when we drop those videos. But with all that said and done, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into the video. Okay, so I've managed to be able to get this leveling all the way up to level 50 to be able to allocate all of the skill points that we'll have available to us. Now, like I did mention, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to be able to branch off this to be able to mess about with, mainly because we didn't have access to all of this when it came to the beta, so I, therefore when we get the full access to the game, I'll be able to mess about with it, and so that you've got that in the back of your mind as to how this is kind of going to work. So when it comes to this, we first and foremost, we want to be able to pick up one of our basic skills, and the main one that we're going to gravitate towards is going to be Puncture. Puncture inside the betas was one of the better ones to be able to use. Now, there were other ones like uh, Blade Shift, which was actually pretty decent, allowing you to be able to move through enemies so you didn't have to use your dodge, but I think Puncture has got the right kind of blend when it comes to damage, when it comes to range, and also a, a very effective way to be able to apply Vulnerable, which is perfect for the amount of DPS that we're looking to be able to do with this build. So ideally, we want to be able to go one point straight into Puncture and one point straight into Enhanced Puncture, allowing us to be able to get even more energy back when we hit a control, crowd controlled enemy. After we put in two points, this will open up the rest of the tree, allowing us to be able to go over to our core skills. And the first one that we want to be able to grab is Twisting Blades. Twisting Blades is going to be the main way for this build to be able to do a lot of damage. We've seen it with many a build when it came to the betas and everything like that. Twisting Blades is absolutely amazing when it comes to damage over time, especially with melee kind of rogues in this sense. So we want to be able to pick this up and straight away and then we do want to be able to extend it through the rest of the tree to be able, before we then go back to puncture. So if we do go into enhanced twisting blades to be able to do even more damage when those blades return back to us and then we also get advanced twisting blades to be able to reduce down the cooldowns. This is going to be very important when we get a little bit later on into the skill tree but feel free to be able to leave this one off until you then get that far into the tree. At some point, we do want to be able to return and be able to get Fundamental Puncture, because this now turns it from a one single blade into three blades, allowing it to be able to have a little bit of spread, and each dealing a bit of reduced damage, but every single time you hit an enemy with at least two blades, that then makes them vulnerable, which is absolutely perfect when it comes to this build, and allows us to be able to increase the amount of damage that we will be doing to them. On top of that, Fundamental works absolutely perfectly with Enhanced because Vulnerable seems to apply the crowd control kind of function to it, allowing us to be able to start stacking up our energy even, even further because every single one of those blades can give us two energy back, meaning that instead of just getting two energy, we're getting six energy every single time that we, we our blades do land onto a crowd controlled enemy. So this is absolutely perfect and it's a great way to be able to start getting our energy all the way back up to full. Moving down the tree though, and we can have a look at some of these points before we move any further. Uh, we want to be able to grab a stutter step a little bit later on into the skill tree at some point because critical striking an enemy grants us 15% move increase movement speed for 4 seconds. I think movement speed is going to be absolutely vital when you play a, uh, a melee kind of focused rogue, allowing you to be able to separate the distance that you have when it comes to twisting blades so you can plant it into an enemy and run even further through a chain of enemies, allowing them to be able to hit every single one of those on their return journey. We also want to be able to branch to the left over here as well, but maybe towards, like I said, when you start leveling up a little bit higher and you start coming against the harder content, allowing us to be able to have three points into sturdy, giving us some extra needed uh, damage reduction when we're in close range to enemies, and then also three into siphoning strikes, giving us a way to keep uh, constantly healing ourselves up when we critically strike close enemies. Now the other main ability that I'm going to be testing out first and foremost is going to be Flurry. Flurry was brilliant inside the beta, especially when we combined it with the, uh, the freezer and the cold imbuement, because this allowed us to be able to do a massive kind of like AoE around ourselves, freezing every single enemy that was next to us, and it was just a great way to be able to start spreading out all the frozen, allowing us to be able to do even more damage on top of that. 
Now, I will be messing about with this and potentially trying out things like Dash and everything like that, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But we do want to be able to go into Enhanced Flurry, where every single time that we damage a crowd control or vulnerable enemy, we then get healed with our life. And then we also get Improved Flurry. If Flurry hits any vulnerable enemies, it will make all enemies hit by that cast vulnerable for three seconds. Of course, because of how the... Um, the puncture is going to be working because we're able to consistently put a vulnerable onto enemies. We're going to then be able to use Flurry to be able to keep spreading that around, and that allows us to be able to do even more DPS on top of that. So we've had a look into all the, all the way when it comes to this kind of skill tree, so we're allowed to move on a little bit further. And that allows us to be able to go into the movement kind of side of things. And like I said, when it comes to uh, one of the abilities that I will be swapping in and out of to be able to see which is better, uh, Dash is going to be one of the better ones. I think I'm, I might try it out with, uh, between Flurry and everything like that. So Flurry will be the flex kind of spot. spot. Uh, so that allows me to be able to pick up Dash. When we dash forward, slice enemies for a certain amount of damage. This starts having a cooldown, which is where Twisting Blades come, comes into it. But there's also ways to be able to get this down as well. Uh, and that allows us to be able to go for Enhanced Dash, where uh, enemies damaged by this dash take 20% increased critical strike damage for, uh, from us for 5 seconds, which is going to be great. And then I'm trying to figure out which one in terms of disciplined and methodical. I'm more leaning towards methodical to be able to get that dash bass faster. Uh, but you could potentially go for disciplined uh, to be able to apply some kind of like extra crowd control on top of that. So I'll probably start out with methodical and just work from there. But the main ones that I do definitely want to be able to go into will be weapon mastery. Again, giving us a bonus when stacking, attacking based on weapon damage. And we will be only using like daggers and swords, which means that we're always going to have that extra increased damage regardless of what's going to happen there. And then we also go for caltrops because we want a way to be able to start freezing enemies uh, to be able to help like, start stacking up that uh, chilled and freeze kind of multiplier uh, but it's also a great way to be able to increase the amount of damage that they'll take so if we have caltrops we leap backwards throw caltrops doing slow which is uh, a great crowd control kind of method uh, and it also deals a little bit of damage and then if we go for enhanced enemies will take three percent increased damage from you for every single time that every second that they're in caltrops and then methodical caltrops to be able to deal cold damage and chill enemies for 20 percent per second which is a great way to be able to start once again start stacking up that freeze allowing us to be able to do even more damage on top of it Moving down from there, we don't do too much in here, but I will, like I said, I will be trying out a couple of things, uh, and I think smoke grenades probably going to be one of the things that I will try out, uh, allowing us to be able to throw a smoky concoction at enemies that daze them for four seconds, and then work our way up to uh, countering smoke grenade to be able to do uh, to be able to reduce down its cooldown, allowing us to be able to throw it out even more because enhanced smoke grenade gives us an, an increased uh, damage multiplier on top of that of fifteen percent. So this would potentially, if I need a little bit extra DPS, if I need to be able to like maximize the amount of damage numbers. Smoke Grenade might be the way to be able to actually go around that, so I definitely will be like testing that out and will be trying it to see if that works. It also works really nicely with some of the aspects that we will have in potentially in our gear, or one of the ones that I want to be able to farm, so definitely keep that in mind as well. I will be showing you off the gear and the skills a little bit later on, so you know, feel free to be able to fast forward into the video to be able to see all that side of things. But we definitely also want to pick up these two keynotes as well because we want to be able to get exploit, allowing us to deal 18% increased damage to healthy and injured enemies. So this, the first time that we hit them and also when they're relatively close to death, we'll be dealing extra damage. And on top of that, in Malice, we deal 9% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Because they're vulnerable, they'll be taking more damage in the first place and now we're dealing even more on top of that, which is absolutely great. And like I said, with Flurry, because we're able to spread it around, we'll just be able to easily have that extra damage multiplier on top. Moving from there, we do have the imbuement type skills. So if we go for precision imbuement, uh, this gives our skills a 9% increased critical strike chance, which is great because uh, the way we're going to be going with the frost is going to actually tie into that quite nicely. Uh, so if we go for cold imbuement, imbues our weapon with frigid, frigid energies. Our next two cast or imbuable skills will deal cold damage and chill enemies for 25% per hit. Uh, we can move down into enhanced cold imbuements where it's on a lucky hit. We have a 30% chance to be able to make enemies vulnerable. So another great way to be able to start imbuing increasing that so that we don't have to rely on puncture to be able to do it and then straight down to mixed cold imbuement uh, meaning that our cold imbued skills deal 20% damage to crowd control enemies and we double this against frozen enemies so the faster we get enemies frozen the more we're fashion or more damage that we're going to be start dealing we then lastly just want because we are picking up cold we want to be able to pick up frigid finesse where we deal 15% increased damage to chilled enemies and this gets doubled up to 30% against frozen enemies so once again another effective way to be able to increase uh, the amount of damage that we will be doing to enemies so it makes sense for us to try and get them frozen as fast as possible. Now I know there's a couple of uh, aspects that, are going, that tie in between cold and poison and that definitely will be something that I will be trying out just to see if uh, it makes sense to be able to have two imbuement skills. So you know that's, that's going to need a little bit of testing before I recommend it when it comes to this. 
So if we move down to our ultimate skills, you can see that we've got quite a bit of investment in here, uh, but we definitely want to be able to pick up Shadow Clone. Shadow Clone is definitely going to be a great way to be able to increase the amount of damage or damage over time that we're going to be doing, because they're going to be copying everything that we're going to be doing with our actions, and with Twisting Blades dealing so much damage in of itself, and then being able to, uh, with the right aspects, be able to float around ourselves, Shadow Clone is going to be absolutely perfect to be able to pick that up. If we then go forward, we'd have Prime, which, where we become unstoppable for five seconds after casting it, but the real reason why we want to progress through this is because we want Supreme Shadow Clone to be able to do an additional 20% of our damage, taking it from 60 all the way up to 80. Now there are a couple other things that we do want to pick up from here, like for example Adrenaline Rush. Well, while you're moving, we gain increased energy regeneration, which is overall quite nice. It means that we're going to be casting our Twisting Blades a lot sooner. And then we also have Haste, when while we're above 50% maximum energy, we gain increased movement speed, and when we're below that, we then gain increased attack speed. Uh, so overall, this is going to be a nice kind of light thing to be able to pick up. I think having that extra uh, mobility is going to be great. It definitely plays into the rogue kind of playstyle. But being able to have that increased attack speed on top of our puncture is also a great way to be able to start getting our energy back so that we then have that movement speed. And then lastly, we do also have Aftermath, when after when we use our ultimate skill, we restore 25 energy. This point is definitely a flex spotter, that is just purely where I was putting it. I just want to test it out to see if that will be something that comes in useful. Uh, but definitely do not need to be able to put this, I'm, I might actually shift it around to be able to increase something else. And then lastly, we do go into this bottom side of things, and we're only allowed to be able to put one point in here. And the reason why I've gone for close quarters combat is because we are using a combination of marksman and cutthroat skills. With our marksman skills, we are using puncture, and when it comes to cutthroat, we are using twisting blades. And because they're the main kind of aspect as to the amount of damage that we will be doing, it makes sense for us to be able to have that kind of like go back and forth, and something that will increase uh, our bonuses just from being able to use that, just in, just in general from our basic kind of playstyle. So damaging a close enemy with a marksman or cutthroat skill, each grants a 10% attack speed bonus for 8 seconds, and while we have both, so if we hit them with a puncture and if we then use a twisting blade, and then while both attack speed bonuses are active, so if we land a puncture and we land a twisting blade, we then deal 20% increased damage against crowd control enemies. And once again, this is a really nice multiplier to be able to have, so I genuinely think this is probably the best one to be able to go for, uh, but once again, this will be something that's probably going to be aspect dependent, so you know, I'm probably going to give this one a try first and then see where it goes from there. So that is going to be the skill tree and, uh, you know, I can't give you like a full uh, picture of this. But what I can do is I can potentially put the link in down in the description below. So if you want to be able to have a quick look over this and you want to be able to uh, put it up on like a separate screen or something like that, feel free to be able to click on that link and that should direct you straight to here. So if we go quickly over to our gears and skills, I've put in a couple of uh, imbuements, a couple of aspects that I think are probably going to be the best things to be able to go for. Uh, things that are really going to complement the build, things that are really going to complement the skills, and should be able to, in theory, be able to increase the amount of damage that we will be doing. So there is also a couple of in here that, like I said, if I do swap out Flurry to be able to try out Dash, there's going to be a couple of things like that, so I will explain those choices as well. So the first one, let's have a look at the helmet. Let's work our way down from the left-hand side, and then we'll work down to the right. Uh, so we've got Frostbit and Aspect, where chilled enemies hit by grenade skills have a chance to double, uh, equal to double your critical strike chance to be instantly frozen for two seconds, and we also deal anywhere between 10 to 25% increased critical strike damage against frozen enemies. This works absolutely perfect into the cold imbuement skill that we're planning to be able to go for, and this is also another reason why I'm thinking of potentially going into the smoke grenade, because having that skill has a chance on an AoE to be able to instantly freeze enemies with that to be able to then do even more damage. So I think this is going to be a really nice one to be able to go for. It's definitely one I'm going to be testing and be able to mess about with, so I think this is probably a great place to be able to start. Uh, going to the chest though, I have put a uh, uh, aspect of quickening fog where automatically drop a smoke grenade at the end of a dash. Dash's cooldown is reduced by so many set points of a second uh, for each enemy that is dazed this way up to anywhere between 0.75 or 1.05 seconds. Um, how I remember it is that the smoke grenade does actually count as a uh, kind of a grenade skill, so therefore. Using this in combination with Frostbit and Aspect is another great way to be able to uh, freeze enemies. It was another great way to be able to daze them. It was a great way to be able to do some crowd control. Uh, overall, this had some really nice synergy when I was using it in the beta, and it's definitely one I'm looking to be able to recreate again. On top of that, because it is tied to Dash, this is going to be one of the abilities that I'm going to be potentially messing about with just to see if I need to swap back in and out of. Uh, so it might be a case that I just take out Flurry and then I just go for this one instead. Uh, but uh, like I said, this is where the testing phase comes in once we have access to the full game. 
Moving on from there, we have the gloves, and this is going to be flurry one, which is, uh, like I said, if we do take out flurry, then this one's going to be disappearing. But this one was relatively easy to be able to get hold of, and this was a great way to be able to do some AoE freeze because of the amount of hits that it does land. So flurry damages enemies in a circle around you, dealing extra increased damage, but we're not using it for the increased damage. We're primarily using it because it allows us to be able to do it in a circle rather than in a small cone that's right in front of us. Then we have Aspect of Disobedience, where we gain so much increased armor for 4 seconds when we deal any form of damage. Because this is a DPS-focused bear build, we are going to be doing damage all of the time, so therefore this is always going to be a great one to be able to go for. Uh, I might mess about with a couple more aspects, but uh, I think having anything to be able to increase the amount of survivability that we can have, especially since rogues are known to be a little bit on the squishy kind of side, uh, I think is just really going to play, pay dividends into the rest of the build, especially as we start gearing up towards endgame. Next we also have the Penitent Greaves, uh, and this is going to be more a unique, so then if, as soon as we start getting into World Tier 3 and we start getting like building our way all, all the way up further, I think this is probably going to be one of the better ones to be able to grab or to be able to keep an eye out for. Uh, but what this does is it leaves behind a trail of frost that chills enemies, and we also deal extra damage to chilled enemies, so because we are going into cold imbuement, it makes sense to be able to go for something to be able to increase the amount of damage that we will be doing, and there's also another great way to be able to do chill damage, to be able to then get them frozen, allowing us to be able to do even more damage to them and that as well. And uh, in terms of the unique, or in terms of the bow, honestly, any bow technically could work. But the the unique of uh, Sky Hunter, I really want to be able to test out because, in in essence, the way it kind of reads suggests that it's any kind of damage that you do the first time you do damage to an enemy uh, you will be getting a guaranteed critical hit and because we are using cold and we're doing frost and everything like that and because some of it increases with the amount of critical strike damage that we're going to or uh, chances that we need uh, I think Sky Hunter is a great thing to be able to test out and it's definitely something that I'm kind of like theorizing could be top tier for this build the way that that reads is the first direct damage you deal to an enemy is a guaranteed critical strike, and if you had maximum stacks of precision key passive when you cast a skill, you also gain energy, and this can only happen once per cast. Now we aren't going into precision, uh, that is something separate in terms of the skill tree, so we haven't gone for that side, but we are primarily using it to be able to see if that first direct damage we deal to an enemy is always a guaranteed critical strike, and if it is, then I think this potentially could be one of the best builds that's going to exist. So that's all the left side, so let's work our way down on the right. So we have Aspect of Imitated Imbuement, and this means our Shadow Clone also mimics our Imbuement skills applied to our skills. Casting an Imbuement skill grants our active Shadow Clone increased damage as well. Uh, so that means if we can give the Cold Imbuement to our Shadow Clone, which is another way to be able to start stacking up that extra Cold damage, meaning that it's more likely they're going to start freezing targets. And then they're also gaining even more damage on top of that when they cast some of their abilities, which means Twisting Blades is going to be even more insane. So that means we get to move on to the rings and the first one is going to be Edge Master's Aspect, where our skills deal up to 10 or 20% increased damage based on the available primary resource when we cast, and we receive the maximum benefit when we have full primary resource. So because of uh, Puncture and how fast that casts and how easy it is to be able to get our energy back, it means that we're going to pretty much always have a nice damage increase just being having to be able to have this equipped. So it makes sense for us to be able to go into some kind of attack speed boost to be able to uh, start using it on Puncture to be able to start stacking our energy up as fast as possible. Uh, but overall, I think Edge Masters is going to be a nice damage increase just from having little to no interaction with the build, just because it's going to be doing this as it is standard, so therefore it's going to be a nice damage increase. And then moving on to the second of the rings, we have the Trickster's Aspect, where Caltrops will now throw a cluster of exploding stun grenades that deal so much total physical damage and then stun enemies for 0.5 seconds. This one works quite nicely because I believe this also works in tandem with the Frostbitten Aspect, uh, because it is a grenade skill, it's a type of grenade that's going to be thrown out, and I believe this was one of the main ways I was able to freeze enemies on top of that, but it's also a great way to be able to keep enemies within the Caltrops, meaning that you're stacking up that extra incre like that, the increased damage every single second they stay in there, meaning that they're going to be taking even more cold damage on top of that, and then you're also stunning them, which is a great way to be able to apply some crowd control. Overall, this works really, really nicely with the build, and I think if as long as you're using Caltrops, this should almost always be an instant lock, uh, at least in that, without testing this properly, but it sounds amazing to me, and this is definitely one that I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for. And then when it comes to the weapons, we have Blade Dancer's Aspect, where Twisting Blades will orbit for a short time around you when they return, dealing so much damage uh, when per hit. Based on the distance they returned, this will increase the amount of damage up to 20 or 30% of the return damage. This is an instant lock. Once again, this was one that has already proven itself when it comes to the betas. This was on pretty much on every single Twisting Blades build that exists, and Blade Dancer's is definitely one of the most desired aspects that's out there when it comes to rogues. 
And then lastly, we have a unique, and this is going to be the Condemnation, where your core skills will deal 20 to 40% increased damage when spending three combo points, and your skills using this weapon have a 30% chance to instantly generate three combo points. Now, because we are using the specialization of combo points, this makes so much sense because combo points is a great way to be able to start increasing the amount of damage that your twisting blades can do, especially when you get all the way up to three combo points. And now we've got a way to be able to increase the amount of damage on top of that through using this dagger. And then even more so, we're having an extra chance of being able to instantly generate three combo points, meaning that we can chain this from enemy to enemy. I'm expecting Condemnation to be one of the most sought after weapons when it comes to rogues, especially for this type of build, and I for one cannot wait to be able to get my hands on it. When it comes to gems in this game, I have gone through a couple of options with this one, but I, once again I might mix and match depending on what how the end game kind of plays out. But in terms of weapon, I'd primarily recommend Sapphires to be able to increase your critical strike damage to crowd control enemies. When it comes to armor, being able to increase your maximum life is probably going to be key. And then when it comes to your jewelry, being able to increase your resistances is a no brainer. In terms of the main skills that you're going to be using though, you want to be able to grab Puncture, you want to be able to grab Twisting Blade, you will be using Cold Imbuement as well, which is going to be the main way to be able to increase the amount of damage that you will be dealing. Uh, you're going to be having your Shadow Clone, you're going to be having your Caltrops, and then it's going to be a case of, is it going to be a case of using Flurry, or is it going to be a case of using Dash, or is there going to be some other kind of combination that's going to be around there? There's also the chance that I do need to throw in Smoke Grenade, so once again, that's the testing that will be done once the game does go live. Now I haven't messed too, about too much when it comes to the Paragon boards because I'm a little bit dubious as to how effective these are going to be. This is going to take a lot of testing to be able to find the right combination, especially for these. But I did spot one legendary node that's instant lock when it comes to this and I think you probably will want to be able to go straight for. And that's going to be the Eldritch Bounty, where you attack with an imbued skill, you gain 20% resistance and 20% increased damage for that imbuement element for 6 seconds. Once again, this is just going to be perfect to be able to go for because we are primarily using our imbuement to be able to increase the amount of damage that the, uh, the build will be doing so therefore I highly recommend that you keep an eye out for this one when it comes to your paragon boards and then get straight over to it but there you go that is everything to do with the ice assassin when it comes to the leveling guide so far once again as soon as I've managed to test into this as soon as I've managed to get some of the aspects as soon as I've managed to get it up to level 50 to be able to actually give you a proper build when it comes to this then I will be dropping a proper guide on that and I will be linking it from this video all the way over to there so just make keep an eye out on the pin section ready in case that actually is already dropped Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. It really does help the channel out. If you did like this video, if you've learned something useful with ourselves, make sure to drop a like and subscribe so you can find us ready for more Diablo 4 content. But with all that said and done, that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on the next video.